Hello everyone. So let's conclude on the whole timing analysis and we are good to go with the setup and whole timing analysis lectures. So um, uh, we concluded that the combinational delay to start with the combinational delay should be greater than the whole time of the capture flop and once the clock network delay comes into the picture you if you see the this particular edge the first thing that we need to do is shift this particular edges that that will reach the launch flop and the capture flop by the required amount of time so that's what we did so this this particular clock edge when it reaches the launch flop it takes around two buffer delays and that's basically captured as delta 1 this particular clock edge once reaches the capture flop it it takes around three three buffer delays so that's being uh, captured as delta 2 and the rest equations remains the same so if you if you remove delta 1 on delta 2 for example if delta 1 and delta 2 are equal the equation still remains the same basically your commercial delay should be greater than the whole time okay so this was about the uh, about the uh, common about the whole timing equation now to add more and more uncertainties to it so we have assume we have a whole time of 10 picoseconds and an uncertainty of 50 picoseconds over here actually really if you say the uncertainty doesn't matter much because in in this case the edge that is going to the launch flop and the capture flop is the same so the amount of jitter that will play a role for the launch flop and the capture flop will be same for example if there if if this particular clock edge let's say doesn't arrive at 0 but at somewhere at 10 nanosecond or sorry 10 picosecond this will be the the uh, the arrival difference will be the same for the launch flop and the capture flop because it's the same edge that is being going to the launch flop and capture flop so uncertainty over here actually really doesn't matter but still to be on a more uh, a more realistic side we add a number which is like 50 picoseconds a very a very a very low value for the uncertainty so so a PLL which is supplying a clock for the launch flop it is sending the same as to the launch flop and the capture flop so the uncertainties and the jitter will be that will be the same for both the both the clock edges that is reaching at this point and this point because they are essentially the same hence the uncertainty value is kept a bit low in over here as compared to the setup setup time analysis where the uncertainty was close to 90 to 100 picoseconds or even more the uncertainty over there are even more because there are different edges that is going to the launch flop and the capture flop the, this edge goes to the launch flop and this edge goes to the capture flop see amount the, the amount of uncertainty is even more in this case it since it's the same edge things have become very simple for us and the uncertainty can be can be kept as a low value okay so with this with this numbers in place we have to just subtract we have to just add the uncertainty value as well so it says that apart from the whole time requirement of this particular capture flop I need some additional value for the uncertainty also so please hold your data for the for my internal whole time and for some uncertainty value okay and finally if you have if you want to give a name to this particular equations it will be called as the right hand side will be called as the data required time and the left hand side will be called as the data arrival time and in this case the definition of slag will be a bit different so slack will be said as data arrival time minus data required time because in this case we expect the data arrival time to be greater than data required time as in uh, uh, this is in contrast with the setup timing analysis where the data required time was expected to be greater than data arrival time or the other way around the data arrival time was supposed to be less than data required time remember it was the combinational delay theta should be less than t that was a requirement in the case of setup timing analysis but in this case since the arrival time the requirement becomes a bit different in this case the arrival time is expected to be greater than the data required time and the difference is referred to as slack and as it is the slack is expected to be either positive or zero if the slack goes to negative it is it is refers if it is referred to as a violation and if it goes to a negative value it says that the data arrival is much before the data required time which means your commercial delay is very fast basically this uh, this if this time goes less than the data required time your delay is very fast and we have to slow down that's what it actually means so here we come to an end with the setup and whole timing analysis and as I said in the first lecture this that there are there are reasons to introduce this particular topic in at this stage the first reason is it's it's a very frequently asked question in VLSI interviews and second to conclude the lectures on OCV we need this particular timing analysis we need the basic concepts of the timing analysis so fr from this point we'll be moving into a more advanced timing analysis which is the which is based on OCV so let's try to Okay, let's try to bring up new set of lectures for uh, on-chip variation timing analysis. Thank you.